Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit of 3n plus 2 over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity is equal to 3. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to use the definition of the limit of a sequence. Now, by definition of the limit of a sequence, this means that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of 3n plus 2 over n plus 1 minus 3 is less than epsilon. So to prove this, all we got to do is prove this. Now, in the proof, we're going to use the following preliminary result. Given any positive real number x, there exists a positive integer m, which satisfies 1 over m is less than x. Okay, now before we get into the proof, let's start out with some scratch work. Now in the scratch work, we're trying to outline how we can show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, let's work with an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. And from here, we want to find a positive integer k, which makes this statement turn out true. Now, we don't know what k is yet, but we're going to figure that out. And let's suppose that we've already figured out what k is, and we'll proceed to show that this statement turns out true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, let's work with an arbitrary positive integer n greater than or equal to k. And with n, we want to show that this inequality is true. And I'll start by writing the left-hand side of the inequality. Now, in the process of showing that this guy is less than epsilon, we're going to figure out what we should choose k to be. Okay, now to start, let's make this look as simple as possible. And in doing so, maybe we can combine these two guys into a single fraction. And to do that, well, we need a common denominator. So let's multiply 3 by n plus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, and now combining these two guys into a single fraction, we get this. And now let's just distribute the minus 3 across. we see that the three ends will go away. And we have two minus three, which is equal to negative one. Now, since n is positive, we know that negative one over n plus one is negative. So the absolute value of this thing is just going to equal one over n plus one. So we have reduced this guy to something that looks way simpler. So it's at this point, maybe we should try to figure out what we should choose k to be. Now, we could try to apply lemma 1, right? And if we do so, let's take x to be epsilon, right? We can do that because epsilon is a positive real number. And because that is true, we know that there is at least one positive integer which satisfies this inequality, where x is equal to epsilon. And so let's say that k is a positive integer which satisfies this inequality. So we have that one over k is less than epsilon. Is this gonna be useful? We're not sure yet, but let's see. We know that we wanna make this guy less than epsilon. So can we use this fact to make this guy less than epsilon? Well, in doing so, we should try to bring k into our scratch work here. And we can do so because we know that n is greater than or equal to k. Therefore, n plus 1 is greater than or equal to k plus 1. And if you take the reciprocal of both sides, you get that 1 over n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over k plus 1. But since k plus 1 is greater than k, we know that 1 over k plus 1 must then be less than 1 over k, which is less than epsilon. So yeah we were able to make this guy less than epsilon, which is exactly what we want. 
So we know exactly what we want to choose k to be. We want to choose k to be a positive integer, which satisfies 1 over k is less than epsilon. And that's what we're going to do. So we have an outline for our proof. So let's actually write up our proof. So in the proof, all we have to do is show that this statement is true. Once we show that, we're done. Because if we prove this statement, that amounts to showing this is true. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a positive integer k, which makes this statement turn out true. But in our scratch work, we chose k using lemma 1. So let's apply lemma 1 right now. In applying lemma 1, we'll take x to be epsilon. And if we do that, we see that there is at least one positive integer which satisfies this inequality for x equals epsilon. And so we'll call that positive integer k. So we have that 1 over k is less than epsilon. Now remember, we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, we're going to take this positive integer to be the k we have in our proof. And with k, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to show that this inequality is true. Right, and that's pretty much what we did in our scratch work. So let me start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. In the beginning of our scratch work, what we did was we combined these two guys into a single fraction. So let me just rewrite all of that real quick. So we have combined this all into a single fraction. And we know that since n is positive, the negative of 1 divided by n plus 1 is negative. So the absolute value of this guy is just equal to 1 over n plus 1. But then from here, we observe that since n plus 1 is greater than or equal to k plus 1, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we have that 1 over n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over k plus 1. But then 1 over k plus 1 is less than 1 over k, and 1 over k is less than epsilon. So we have shown that this guy is less than epsilon, which is what we want. But now let's put this together to make sure that we actually did what we wanted to. We see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that this guy is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, this guy is less than epsilon. So taking k to be the k we have in our proof, we have that this is true. So there is at least one positive integer which makes this statement turn out true, so this is true. But now putting this all together, we have that under the assumption epsilon is greater than zero, we have that this is true. And since epsilon was arbitrary, this means we have that for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we have proven this entire statement, which amounts to proving what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.